Hi everyone, this is Mel Stevens and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My next four vlogs are going to be about the Live Safe Travel Smart program held between the 8th and 11th of October 2018. This program has been held at Guide Dogs Victoria and is sponsored by the Burundara Shire Council. In this vlog today, I'm going to introduce you to and show you some of the highlights of Arnold Cook House, which is the residential facility where this program will take place. Welcome to my Live Safe Travel Smart vlog series. This program has been held at Guide Dogs Victoria between the 8th and 11th of October 2018. I'm standing outside my room here in the corridor, which I'll show you the corridor a little bit later on. And I am in room 6, as you can see by the sign on the door. So the door actually has two signs on it. One here at about eye level, which is a big when I could see I'm pretty sure they were white um, print number six and then again at about chest height we have this little sign which has once again a print number six and a braille number six so we'll go in so as I said to you guys earlier this room has tiles on the floor which is important for um, keeping the room clean for when or if a dog has an accident, that's it. And as you can see, Darcy is there on his bed. So the rooms are very well set out, I think. So the first thing that we've got on the left-hand side, when you walk into the room, is you've got a bedside table, which has one big, massive drawer in it, and a shelf underneath. Then next to the bedside table, we obviously have a bed. They are just single beds with a wooden frame. Um, and they're actually quite nice and high. I like how high these beds are off the floor. And then in the corner over at the end of the bed, we have a desk with a little chair at the desk. And here on the wall next to the desk is a hairdryer, which I have never, I have been staying in Arnold Cook House for years and years and years, and I have never actually used the hairdryer except for once. Um, so then you come along here and next to the desk is the dog bed. Guide dogs actually supply these beds um, for clients to come in. So it's really, really great that they supply um, our beds you just have to bring your own blanket when you're in here on a program like this when you are actually getting your dog you don't have to bring a blanket or anything obviously because you may not have those sorts of things and then beside Darcy's bed um, is the window and I'm pretty sure if I can remember the view out room six's window looks out onto grass and then down the hill there's a walkway to the well it used to be the reception and administration building but I'm not actually sure what that building there is now because I think they're changing things around and then next to the window here we have the bathroom so in the bathroom it's actually a compact space the bathroom so when you walk in the first thing on your right is the shower you have to be careful of these showers because they do have rather a sizable step into them and then straight in front is the towel rack and then on the left hand side is the sink so these bathrooms are actually really interesting guys because as you heard as soon as I opened the door the fan and the light came on so what happens with the bathrooms here at Arnold Cook House is the light and fan have a sensor and as you saw they open the, the the light and fan turn on as soon as you open the door and then when you close the door and there's no movement in the bathroom it will eventually turn off i'm pretty sure that the sensor like the the, the timer is a 
about either three or five minutes. I can't remember exactly which. And it's really funny because when you're having a shower, guys, um, you have to open the shower door and sort of wave your arm around in the bathroom so that the light and fan will come back on because these bathrooms steam up pretty easily and you cannot have a shower with the door open. And the reason for that is because the steam comes into the room and the smoke detectors and heat sensors in these rooms are very sensitive. So the smoke de detector goes off and the whole building has to be evacuated. So you must keep the bathroom door shut here at Arnold Cook House when you're having your shower. So then on the floor here between the door of the bathroom and the door of the wardrobe is where I keep my dog bowl. So it has water in it during the day and then in the evening and morning I feed Darcy and that's where um, he eats and drinks. And then in this door here next to the bathroom, we have got the wardrobe. So. On the back of the wardrobe door here, there is a hook, and that's where I usually keep Darcy's. As you can see, he's got just a collar is on there at the moment. That's also where sometimes I keep my toilet harness. And then inside the wardrobe, we've got hooks all on the wall here. Um, I have his working harness in on the hook here, and I also have my raincoat on the hook here. And then on the top of the um, on the top of the chest of drawers here, I just keep my suitcase here. And I've unpacked into all these drawers here. And then I'm going to walk down and show you the bathroom, um, the public bathroom, and hope that there's no clients. So you guys are probably wondering, why isn't there a toilet in the bathroom, in my room? So I'll take you through and show you. Here at Arnold Cook House, we actually have separate um, toilets for the clients. Um, there is only one room that has a bathroom actually attached to it, and that is room 14, and that's the access. Guys, I'm bathroom. now in the ladies' toilet. Um, I'm just going to quickly show you. Um, this is one cubicle here, and this cubicle is the bigger one, and it has a bath in it as well as the toilet. Then there's a second cubicle here, and then at the end here is the hand basin where you wash your hands and everything like that so it's actually a fairly decent walk um, from my room up to the bathroom which is fine by me because exercise is healthy. i'm actually really happy that i'm in this room room six because this is actually mine and darcy's room this is the room that i was in for four weeks while i was living down here at arnold cook house getting darcy nearly six years ago it'll be six years ago in three weeks time so this room is really really special to me and Darcy and I'm just so grateful that I'm able to to be in this room um, for this program because this might actually be Darcy's last time down here at Guide Dogs Victoria before he retires so I think it will be so wonderful and so significant that Darcy and I have our last sleep over here at Arnold Cook House together um, in the room that we were in for four weeks when we trained together. I'm going to get all teary. Um, and, you know, it's like J.K. Rowling says, I open at the close. So it's really exciting. Okay, you guys, so this is the corridor. And I can't actually film in here for very long because of the chance of clients coming in and out and I can't actually be interrupted with with clients so I will take you back down to my room and explain about the corridor and while there's no clients in here guys I'm just going to show you a quick look up and down the corridor um, from the perspective of my room so I've actually got my room my back to my room door I'm going to step out a bit so to my left there that's the dog run area which I'll show you guys later when it stops raining and to my right up there that is where I was just standing to do the vlog um, view down the corridor here I'm just going to quickly show you before any clients come on the floor here we've got kind of what looks like paths so we've got darker parts of floor and lighter parts of floor 
and all those darker parts of floor are kind of the areas where you walk and all the lighter parts of floor are the areas where you sort of don't walk so as you can see there's a darker part of floor here that goes straight from the room 11 door if i turn around to the room 6 door and as you can also see if i stand in the middle of this light part of floor here um, there's darker part of wall there against a uh, floor there against the wall the path between room 7 and room 10 and then the path on the other side of the wall uh, on the other side up the wall so I'll take you back into my room now and explain about the corridor and what it's used for so guys the reason um, why the corridor is so big and so long is because when there are clients here on uh, guide dog training programs that is actually where we do all of our obedience so what happens is the clients walk up and down the corridor um, getting their dogs to do different obedience tasks sitting waiting staying lying down standing and waiting all those sorts of things it's also where at the beginning of training clients do uh, sorry dogs do obstacle work in a controlled and easy environment and the other thing uh, about the corridor is that um, you are meant to walk on with the wall always on your right hand side or your non-dog side. So I guess there are a couple of reasons for that. Um, the first is so that you're not brushing the dog up against the wall and so that the dog is not on your inside. The dog needs to be on your on your outside as I as I'm going to call it so on your your non wall side which is your left the wall always has to be on the right and the advantage about having the wall always on your right hand side instead of on your left hand side especially when you do have a dog is so that what you can do is you can trail the wall and I'll show you what I mean by that so in order to find um, my room what I would do is I would actually count the doors from back that way and I would be trailing them and counting them. So the doors actually have rather a large, I'm going to use room 12 because there's no client in here. The doors actually have rather a large indent. So you trail along and you feel where the door indents. And when you've counted that you've come to the correct amount of rooms for your Room. is a thing called squaring off so say for example my room room six is directly opposite room 11 so what i would do to get to room 11 is i would start back at the very beginning of the corridor i would come in on the right hand side in the indoor and i think the sign actually does say in and i would feel all of the doors um i would feel the exit to the walkway to one of the staff buildings I would feel the toilet the female toilets I would then feel the two cupboards then I would feel the room doors so I've got 14 13 the laundry room 12 and then I'm gonna trail along and here is room 11 and as I said um, previously we do have both print and braille numbers so I could check if I wanted to if I didn't know that this was room 11 I'm going to stand with my back to the room 11 door which is what's called squaring off I'm going to square off with the room 11 door and walk straight ahead to then bump into and arrive at room 6's door and room six is actually really good and significant and so is room five because there's this like wooden handrail thing here and I'm pretty sure this there's this cupboard here has um, the stuff for the fire warden I think it's got like all the fire you know um, what are those things called fire hydrants so that is how I would find my room and some bit, bit more information about the corridor. So everyone, you're looking at a wide expanse of grass here out the back of Arnold Cook House. I'll show you where we are in relation to everything in a moment. 
So this piece of grass here um, is runs along between Arnold Cook House, which is this building here on my right, and the resources building, which is the building straight in front of me here. And there's a long piece of grass down, sorry, down this way. And there's also this big piece of grass. So it's sort of um, quite a big area. And this is where we toilet our dogs on class. So this is where we do all of our re leash relieving. There are runs, um, dog runs, that you can actually take your dog off lead and let your dog relieve off lead. Um, but I'm not going to be able to show you those today. So here we also have, um, so as you guys know, we pick up after our dogs in little baggies. So here on this rail beside the grass area, we have a rubbish bin for the used bags. And then we have a, um, then we have a roll of toilet bags. So you come out here with your toilet harness, you grab a, a bag off the roll and thus toilet your dog the same way that um, you guys have seen me toilet Darcy um, when I'm at home. And then when you're finished, you come across and there's actually, um, it's security card entry only to the back of Arnold Cook House here. And it sort of seems to be malfunctioning a little bit at the moment, but there is a, I'm not sure if you guys can hear it, but there is a beeper here to sort of, sort of show you back where the building is. And then I'm not going to show doing it for security reasons, but you hold your card to the thing and it will admit you to the inside of the corridor. So I'm gonna stand against the wall here and now I'm looking back up the corridor to where I was standing um, at the beginning of my last corridor description. So I'm now standing at the toileting area end of the corridor. So if I was to come in through the indoor into the corridor, um, I've got room nine immediately on my right uh, sorry, room eight immediately on my right. And then I trail the wall. I've got room seven. This is the second room. I still trail the wall. And I've got room six. And once again, I've got the braille sign. And I've also got this very distinct handrail outside of room six. Another important part about programs here at Guide Dogs Victoria is the sociali socialization. So... As you guys are aware, a guide dog training program is actually a really long time. I think it's currently three weeks. When I did it, it was four. So getting to know the other people who you're effectively living with for five days a week for four weeks is really important. And as you can see, our bedrooms aren't really a great spot to socialise. So the next best thing is the lounge room, which is where I am now. So the lounge room is rather a large space that has comfortable couches, a table, and all sorts of things for you to enjoy. So I'm doing this part in the evening after everyone's actually gone to bed because I didn't want any clients in this video as I keep saying throughout. So I'll just quickly show you the lounge room before I have to go to bed myself. So as you walk in the main door of the lounge room, you're still on the hard lino floor. And as you can probably hear from the background, all of the main area in Arnold Cook House is echoey. So immediately when you walk in, you've got a table on your right and this table has some chairs around it and it's where we usually sit and have supper, you know, cups of tea and coffee and that sort of thing. And then over here we have got the tea and coffee making facility. There's a kettle and a bar fridge, a little sink, some cups and glasses, and all of those sorts of things. There's a rubbish bin. There's even a dog bowl, bowl on the floor here, which I just kicked. Um, and then we've got a water cooler, which is on the very edge of the carpet. So then you step onto carpet and when you do so, you're in the area where all the couches are. 
So one of the other important things that the lounge room is used for, guys, is this is really the spot that all program activities occur. So if you're doing any activities during the program based here at Arnold Cook House, this is usually where you would do them. So we would sit down here in a big group and do lectures or interactive sessions such as one that we had this afternoon. And if you've seen my uh, Live Safe, Travel Smart vlog two, day one, you will understand uh, what those sorts of things are. So here we just have a whole range of couches and chairs um, and there is a small oval coffee table in the middle. And one of the things that we do do is we do actually choose our own kind of chair. And this is sort of a very important thing, especially when we're here training with our dogs, is we choose our own chair. And that chair is the one where we sit with our dog. It's about having consistency and knowing where you are at all times and, and having the same layout for the room. So I'm actually sitting in my chair that I have chosen for this program. Um, and this is actually one of the oldest style armchairs here at Guide Dogs Victoria. I love these. They have a good piece of wood at the end of the arm there. I use that as my little coffee table. They're pretty low to the ground as well. And I like that because I can just reach over when Darcy's here because he's in my room at the moment. And I can just pat Darcy on the floor there and this is what the space looks like from when I'm sitting in my chair so that is the living room and there is a little offshoot um, for the living room called the TV room I'm not going to go in there now um, but I'll show you that during the day tomorrow because that's that's got a really nice view during the day Okay everyone, so now we're looking at the dining room. So this is the dining room here at Arnold Cook House. Um, as you can see, we have got two tables. We've got this one here on the right and this larger one here on the left. So generally the rule of thumb is that this left hand table here, which is the larger one, this is the client table. And this right hand table here is the staff table. Okay? So, once again, like I explained last night uh, with the lounge room, is we generally have uh, our own place at the table. And that is, as I say, good for the dogs to practice their destination. Um, to get to your chair at the table and it's also good for you so that you know where you're meant to be going when you come into the dining room and it's also um, just good to have a nice routine of which way is the room set out every time so beyond the two tables um, behind the client table we've got the breakfast buffet here so this is a bench space that has the kettle and the toaster and I'm pretty sure all the cereal and that is kept here so this is where um, breakfast is usually made generally on a guide dog program this being a class the staff here at Arnold Cook House are so wonderful and they actually make our breakfast so that it's easier with our dogs that we're not getting up and down from the table all the time that we just come we sit and we just relax and the staff are so kind and they actually get our breakfast for us when I used to come to children's mobility service programs we actually um, were encouraged to prepare our breakfast independently so we would get up and make our 
our Milo or our toast or whatever we had for breakfast. So that is how we organised that. And then um, there's cutlery kept in this drawer here as well. And just all of the things required for setting the table and making your breakfast are in this cupboard. Um, and then I'm not going to show you that way. But next to where you can hear the radio playing is the kitchen. Clients aren't actually allowed in this kitchen. This is, this is the industrial kitchen. So you have to have all the particular safety things and everything to be allowed in this kitchen. So I'm not going to go in the kitchen and show you. I'm just going to quickly show you here on the bench. Uh, this is the bench where we, on children's mobility programs, where we have to bring our plates and bowls and cups when they're done at our meals if you were to continue walking straight you would come to the walkway between the lounge and the corridor I hope there's no clients in there right now so once again this is the lounge here I'm going to do a U-turn. The corridor's there on your left. Dining room straight in front. And then if you turn right in this little open bit here, this is actually the entry into Arnold Cook House. There's a telephone box there. We have a buffet there um, with fruit and music bars and snacks that we are encouraged to pick up and take with us to snack on during the day on this program. And then... Um, we've also got the Arnold Cook House Supervisor's Office and so out the front of Arnold Cook House there is the, drive, the main Guide Dogs Victoria driveway and I probably shouldn't be showing you all that right now because it is dark outside.